Hey, how is everyone? So he's going to jump on in a moment. We are going to go deep into, there he is, there he is. Let me get him on, let me get him on, let me get him on. Let me just see. He's My man. Come on. Connecting. Hey! <laughs> Peace, bro. Peace, brother. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good, man. No questions. How about yourself? Yeah, good, man. Good. Can you hear me okay? I can. I'm going to turn my phone up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, man, I can hear you. Good. I may actually... Uh... I may actually just put my my earphones in so that maybe hear hear each other a little better. Oh, this will be hear you be a bit more clear. That could be a bit more clear, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, man. Well, I want to say thank you so much for being here. And yeah, you know, this is going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty epic conversation. We got to we got together in uh, it was a few months ago now doing a podcast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Time goes. By yeah, so jumped on. Almost a year, bro. Almost a year. Whoa. Okay, so anyway, a year ago we jumped on, did that podcast, and that was cool. And we, we've been going back and forth the last few weeks, and I think there's a few important topics to speak to. And I'm I'm curious, you know, where it goes. But I know we, we were talking about, you know, moving sexual energies, how sexual en energies can really evolve our sense of being and begin to, you know, break down discrimination, break down barriers, difference, isolation. I'm, I'm so curious to hear your thoughts on that. But I mean. You know, beyond that, and the the emotional charge that conscious sex and sexuality and sacred union and that that level of intimacy can bring into our lives. Um, I'm curious to know your your thoughts on that. But before we delve deep into that, brother, tell for my audience particularly because I, I, we've jumped on my Instagram. Tell, introduce yourself. Tell the audience a little bit about who you are, please. Um, and as a sort of fun fact. Tell us some of the biggest, one of the biggest challenges that you've been through and how you move through that. And then we'll sort of, we'll, you know, we'll just let the conversation flow, man. All right. Sounds good, Stefano. So, well, you know, for me, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm Shofar and uh, the work that I do, I like to call it SEX. Uh, so Central Emotional Exchange. Um, I, I know that some people like to call it Sacred Energy Exchange and I love that acronym too. But when I was writing my book, uh, you know, about three years ago, I was trying to come up with an acronym that for me, just in the name itself, would help people kind of get what it is that, that, that we do. Because I know for many of us, like when I first started my journey in 2002 with it, it's kind of new and we have no point of reference, right? Uh, so central emotional exchange is talking to the central being the physical body and then the emotional body, uh, the, our emo uh, emotions, and then the X, is for our awareness and our breath is that is what weaves between the sensual and the emotional. I love that, man. I love that. Tell me, tell me a little bit about who you're, I just want to get people really get a feel for you, who you're working with at the moment, what you're really passionate and excited about as well. Obviously that and the integration of that into humanity and community. And again, back to that, back to that challenge, if you don't mind, like some of those, you know, one of the biggest challenges that you face in your life is I feel that, you know, for me, brother, and I'll just share very, very briefly on this. For me, one of the biggest challenges of my life was really dealing with my shame and more specifically my actions, you know, my aggression, my anger, my infidelity, my lying, my cheating, my shadow, like really, you know, all the quote unquote bad shit I did uh, that really hurt others along the way of my journey, being very immature and inconsiderate. And that has been some of the biggest challenges and that brought up a lot of shame from my childhood and dealing with childhood abuse and wounding and all of that. But it's also shaped who I am today. And without all of those experiences, and, you, and I know sometimes, you know, many, many years ago, if you had told me, hey, all this really difficult shit you've been through, it's actually worth something. And here it is, I would have said, go fuck yourself, right? <laughs> and, and sometimes we get to that point where it's just, we don't believe it. And we're not, we can't receive that. But knowing you, brother, knowing you in the way that I do, um, Shofar, knowing you, seeing how you move through the world, there's something that's that's uh, crystallized within you. There's, there's, I think you've uh, you had a number of different experiences in your life where they've been deep awakenings, deep catalysts for transformation. Love for you to share a little bit of that here as well. I love that. Thank you for asking that. Um, I think 
there's a, been a number of challenges, but if I was to, to funnel it down to some of the main ones is being a black slash man. And, you know, I say quote unquote black, you know, with these, these, these different, uh, uh, these different social programming about what it means to be black, what it means to be a man and what it means to be a black man. And mm -hmm. uh, so some of those challenges around, uh, you know, blackness and the, the challenge that I've seen around, you know, growing up. Uh, so I was born in uh, Jamaica, Queens, New York, and then mm -hmm. raised in Richmond, Virginia. For those of us uh, that don't know, uh, Virginia was one of the original colonies, you know, the 13 colonies. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that I come from the land of the Pamunkey and the Powhatan, the, the Monacan, uh, the Chippehominy, uh, the place that we now call Virginia. Um, these were some of the tribes that were there before. And mm -hmm. uh, coming up, uh, you know, growing up uh, right down the, down the street, stuff was from where Patrick Henry gave his speech, give me liberty or give me death. And then he went home to his slaves, you know. And so growing wow. up in racist Virginia, as a black man and, and, and the different things that I saw, the inequalities and everything. So that's one. Uh, and, and that's a whole journey. And then just as a man, a man who did not have his father in his life, you know, maybe even from the the my father was a black panther. My mom told me and that he, wow. you know, the different things that he struggled with, you know, that, that came through his lineage. And so he was never really present in my life. And uh, so uh, my journey of manhood also and what it means, and I'm still on that journey, you know? Uh, so those are Likewise. my major struggles, you know? Yeah, wow. But what, what brought you to Virginia? So I'd imagine you, you moved from a, a city where there was greater levels of, familiar, you know, superficial familiarity or surface level familiarity, you know, skin tone, culture, race, etc., to a city or a place where there was so much more oppression and discrimination. How did you, how did you also internalize that? What did you make that mean about yourself? Uh, yeah, well, so many things. I mean, this is how insidious, uh, you know, racism can be for, or, or any of the isms. And we're talking more about the isms, right? It's not just racism. Mm. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're insidious and they can get in without us even knowing. I remember my mom uh, uh, asking me as a young kid, I was maybe five years old, uh, why I wasn't coloring, you know, in my coloring book, I would color everybody, I would color everything, the grass, the trees, the birds, whatever, but I wouldn't color the people. I would leave them white, like the page. And my mom asked me about that. And uh, Stephanos, I was like, I don't know, cause I, I don't think it's, I don't think the brown or black is pretty or, you know, nice looking. And here's the thing. I never had a Ku Klux Klan member yell in my, my ear, nigga, you ain't, you know, I never had someone right up in my head or, you know, like burning crosses in my front yard. It wasn't blatant. It seeps into our consciousness, you know, quietly. You know, mm. I am a five year old, you know, uh, young boy. And somehow I got the idea that that my own skin tone was ugly, you know. And so, yeah, it, it's interesting. Man, man, very. And so and that's that's just you in a very subtle way. Not, maybe not even recognizing without mum saying something to you that you're doing that. And then, you know, I'm wondering, what does it take for you to undo that as a young black man moving into the world, into his own autonomy, sort of, you know, coming into 18, 19, 20, 21, come, I mean, like really, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this, just coming into, well, who am I now? Uh, really, who am I? And how do you undo that? How do you come into a place of deeper self-acceptance and compassion? This is a beautiful, I feel this is a beautiful example. Again, you mentioned it before, and I love this, with all the isms, with all the oppression and the discrimination that we feel and that we experience because we're different, irrespective of what we, you know, what we look like, but the, the different in our interests, different in our values, difference in how we think and feel, difference in our sexual orientation, difference in our sexual preferences. And, and I know this is a lot of the work that you do in the, the, the central emotional exchange work, right? How, do, how did you, how did you, what's the word? I think recalibrate maybe or come into your authentic power. How, how did you come into your authentic power as a young man undoing a lot of that unconscious conditioning and programming? Huh, very good question. Um, 
I'd like to liken it some, somewhat to the story of uh, Osiris and, um, I mean, uh, Asar and Oset back in ancient Egypt, a- ancient Kemet. There's a story that, long story short, that ancient uh, Asar was chopped up into many pieces by his brother Set, or where we get the word Satan from. And, uh, and all of this is about consciousness, really. Like these are allegories and stories for about what goes inside of all of us yep. and stories and analogies. So anyway, long story short, he was broken into 14 different pieces. Um, and the last piece uh, uh, that his wife helped him put back together was his phallus, you know, his manhood. And so I like to think that for myself, there was different, you know, whether it was uh, uh, a teacher that, um, uh, that my mom married at one point, he got us into Hebrew Israelite. Or my mom putting up pictures of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Marcus Garvey. Um, it's like I was piecing together remnants of myself. The sad thing mm-hmm. is that many of us through these isms, we never put those pieces together. We never find ourselves again. I was just, right. fortunate, you know, um, uh, you know, inshallah, th- thankful to, to, to the, the creator that I was able to put it back together. But a, a lot of us have not been able to do that. Yeah. And did you, did you start, was it a painful process for you, man, piecing that? Put those parts of yourself back together because I'd imagine when you're in intimate relationship and intimate union and, and you know for me man I'll just be very transparent nothing's off limits so if anything's off limits for you just don't answer it you know I, I'm just freestyling here so <laughs> if, it's, if it's you don't want to go there don't go there but I'd imagine in in um, intimate intimate union intimate relating and not just sexual union but just being vulnerable and showing ourselves right and opening up our hearts opening up parts of who we are there's almost this this divide and chasm within because it's like we want to show parts of ourselves yet we're scared there's a fear that it's going to be discriminated against or rejected or humiliated or judged or ridiculed right and so then we hold back and we contract and you know people are intuitive whether they know it or not they're intuitive and they feel that contraction so i'm wondering how how that affected your intimate relationships especially again as a young man as you're putting these pieces back together what do i show what do i don't and I, I imagine you know dr john d martini says our voids become our values right so it's no it's no surprise it's no to me that you're you know you're essentially working with people piecing them back together so to speak you that that central emotional exchange is about for me is about integrity is about connection is about wholeness right and so as you're putting yourself back together, as you're moving into wholeness and moving through shame and doubt of who am I, who am I going to be, what have I neglected, in intimate union, what have been some of the biggest challenges at the beginning of that journey for you in terms of showing yourself and being really open-hearted? I love the questions you have, bro. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's all you, man. It's all yeah. you. <laughs> It's, 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 I'm, I'm feeling it, you know? I love, I love, I love one of your posts, uh, bro, that you have about like how, you know, the, some of the men that come to you, they're asking like, how can they get in touch with their feminine? And then the women that come to you, they're asking like, how can they get their men to be in a feminine? And then I love your breakdown of that. And that's, that was kind of my journey is where, uh, you know, overdoing it. I'm definitely like a person of extreme sometimes and I, homeostasis and balance has been a challenge for me. You know that yin and, yin and yang homeostasis and balance. So there would be times like in first coming becoming more of a conscious man. It's like you go deep into your feminine and in your heart space, and you know. And before that, I was more in my in my in my penis and my lingam. You know, before that, you know. And so, uh, and now where I'm tra- looking to be is like I love this saying by this. I think it's um, a Swiss uh, philosopher. He says that there's more wisdom in our bodies um, than in our most grandest philosophies and uh i think to answer you know those those men and women those men who are looking to to, to bring back in their feminine it's like our innate intelligence already knows how to because right now our lingam our penis our dick whatever you want to call it is 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 uh flaccid it's soft and when the moment is right it knows when to become strong and get, become hard right mm-hmm. and Finding that balance, finding that place of getting this out the way to get back to that innate intelligence that's already in there. Was it, was it, I love that, man. Was there a moment for you where it, it almost, and maybe it wasn't a blinding light or a flatus or spiritual revelation, but it was a moment for you where you dropped into self acceptance, such a profound level of self acceptance that you'd seen yourself in a way you've never seen yourself before. And that was the moment that you stopped hiding from. And I get we're always going to wear masks to some degree and hide to some degree, but there's a, there's a line that we cross, I believe, 
once we've done a deep enough work and there's enough self love self respect self acceptance that we stop wearing these these big masks the core wounds that we've dealt with we've just dealt with that the ones that have been there that we you know there's layers to that but we've really dealt with them was there a moment in your life where there was just this <sighs> i get me like this is me and i don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks or feels about it yeah i can think of two or fan uh stephanos that really mm. stuck out to me um one is uh 2007 when i saw the central emotional exchange work being done for the first time in person and the woman uh was on the table one of the three masters that i learned from he was hovering his hand over the woman almost like a reiki session and she was going into this deep state of like orgasmic bliss orgasm after yeah. after orgasm and then she just went into a place where she just kind of went blacked out and went to like what what i think scientifically we haven't studied it, but i i'm thinking theoretically that she probably was in a gamma state where her gamma yeah. was, where she was just in such a deep state of consciousness and what he had us do is to come around her and there was such a str- strong sense of peace that was coming like her body was like a doorway of peace just coming through her it was that was one of those moments that expanded my consciousness in a way that i don't think i'll ever be the same again the other one it was in 2014 7 years later when i got a session with the, the third master that i studied with um and i got uh, her name is Sasha and she gave me a sensual emotional body uh experience without touching me and all these memories from my childhood and how oh. I, money how i framed uh the feminine came into my consciousness and again that expansion was just like so those were two moments that i can really put my fingers on that have for for changed me forever i think That's powerful man. I'm going to make a comment on that first one. Then I've got a question for you based on what you just said a moment ago in that second experience. You know, it's interesting that that first experience that you had as you were asked to come closer, it was a very transitory internalized internally transitory experience for you where you you just by being in that woman's presence that human being's presence and the experience that she was having having it translated transmuted into your experience and i think that's that's profound evidence and or an example of how connected we are and how really we're relational beings like we grow through being in relationship with each other right and and i i think that's in, in whatever way shape or form i don't think it's a question of are we in relationship to something i think we're in relationship to everything we live in a dualistic world we live in a world of polarity i think what's really more important is that what we ask what is the quality of the relationship that we have with whatever we are paying our attention to whatever we are intending upon and the second thing i want to say or want to ask you is, is you know you mentioned feminine there and and it just it it triggers something in my mind around well two parts to that actually one when the the childhood wounding came up and all the childhood experiences came up one how did you deal with that two did you meet that with resistance or did you meet that were you at a space in your life where you were open and if so what did that what was that experience like for you I'll, i'll get to the feminine what um, question in a moment but yeah just go there that's I th- i'm curious about that i love it uh you know that that's the beautiful thing about my experience of the work and then like with the clients that i've worked with what they they've shared back with me but speaking from my own place of experience uh what happened for me is that there was a grand reframing of these experiences it's like Uh the reason why the person starts to orgasm when they get in this work done uh that's one of the possibilities of where the session may go is because uh we we start to reframe some of these things these woundings all of these things that have not felt like love that have not felt like uh you know uh unconditional uh acceptance mm. And, mm. and appreciation and so what happens is that we're starting to transmute these emotions these soil emotions i i saw another one of your posts where you were talking about like the stairs and how we always want things to go up. True, we want them to go up, but we got to also honor if you don't have something going down, you have no stairs. <laughs> you know? And so uh there was a grand reframing of these things that I had looked at as quote unquote negative and like you were talking about earlier like you would have fought somebody if they had told you that all these shitty experiences would actually mean something to you later. You know, and that they would actually be same thing it's like there's soil their manure they're the things that yeah. that, that, that that the plant grows from 
Most certainly, man. I And that's, you know, often for me, my journey has been one of those journeys where it's, yep, I've had to learn the, the painful way, the extreme way. You know, I've had that extreme personality, that extreme sense of experience, that extreme sense of, of feeling my way through the world. And, you know, overall, I look back now, it's it's been quite profound for me. And at the time, it's been deeply intense. I don't think we all need to learn through such deep contrast i believe we learn through contrast i believe human consciousness and the greater collective is at a point where we need to learn through painful contrast i think that's where our consciousness is at the moment i, I think we're moving through that i think we're evolving through that um but you know I, I feel that's pretty evident in the way that we have dealt with things at a collective level geopolitically socially spiritually and that's been happening for so so long thousands of years right really as we started to you know, quote unquote evolve or civilize ourselves that's another fucking conversation um we have created more tangible pr uh, problems for ourselves more tangible pain for ourselves you know like just systematic existential pain right Interesting. So this, you know, what I'm hearing is is sex consciousness. I'm hearing sexual consciousness, right? And so, uh, talk to let's let's get into a, a narrative or a dialogue here around sex consciousness and the power of sex consciousness, and specifically how how sexual union and the sacredness of sexual union, you know, set through an intention, and I'm sure various practices and, and rituals and so forth, but how the sacredness of of sexual union and sexual consciousness it 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 brings us together it unifies us and it begins to end discrimination and fear of difference i love that uh well you know i, I love that you spoke to the collective and the collective uh, uh consciousness and uh, i would love to say like the collective uh trauma that has been on this mm. planet right like whether it's us dropping bombs on Hiroshima and, Hiroshima and Nagasaki or slavery or wounded knee and like, I mean, you name it, you know, all of the, all of the, the various traumas that have happened to us all as Hugh being, as the Hugh being family collectively. And we know from um, uh, psychology that this can cause the, what we call them, um, they have this thing called multiple personality disorder and uh, where, where the, the ego or the, the id splits into these fragments yep. and separateness because of some some perceived trauma i believe that that can happen on the individual level where we see like a person have multiple personalities in one being and one physical mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. i think uh, uh stephanos what also happens is though it has happened to us collectively yep beings as the human being family we have collectively been broken into shards that we think that we are all these different pieces of black race white race and you know uh transsexual and you know all these different things and everything when really we're this 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 one being so to answer your question though i feel like central emotion exchange and sex and other technologies like that uh help us to get back to the place of wholeness uh, because really as you alluded to when you were just speaking any of the systems or things that we come up with as solutions <laughs> you know whether it be voting or burn the motherfucker down or anything in between <laughs> we still perpetuate the same thing over and over again because we're not evolving yeah we've got to evolve yeah tell me about brother I'm, I'm on the page i'm on the page <laughs> tell me and and you know the thing is shofar as well i'm not i'm not necessarily interested in this utopian state i don't even know if that exists i'm not i'm not interested in that i think that's that's way too much for people it's like saying to someone that's never run a day in their life saying hey tomorrow you're going to run for three days straight non-stop they're going to be like whoa overwhelmed right but if you say to them hey in two years time, we're going to build you up to be, to be able to run for three days straight. And this is the training program. This is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to start. We're just going to start with five minutes tomorrow. That's palatable for people. When you start talking about it, we start talking about a utopian existence. People are like, whoa, what do you mean? You're going to make all these changes? What about government? What about police? What about my home? What about my job? What about like people just, it, it just doesn't work. So I hear what you're saying. I, I want to, I want to go somewhere else with this as well. Tell, tell us more about the, if you know, if you're aware of this, the roots of sensual emotional exchange, whether it just be the, the energetic roots and the ethos, um, which you've, you've, you've delved into, of course, but also where does it come from? How is it born? Because most things that are, that are fucking epic are usually born from pain. You, know, you look at Jesus Christ on the cross. You look at 
what the the Greeks went through to to bring democracy and philosophy to the world. You look at um, what Moses had to go through as an example. You you look at what the Buddha had to go through. Like the, you, you know, there's 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 this deep suffering that preludes awakening. And I'm, I'm imagining with central emotional exchange, and I'm not too familiar with it, and I'm, I don't know if the, you know, the audience is as well, but can you tell us a little more about the roots of that and, and the story of that, the, the, the value of that at a deeper level? Yeah, I, so, you know, from the ancient systems of Tantra and other technologies, uh, you know, from ancient India, ancient Kemet, ancient uh, China, you know, these different places of, uh, with sacred union and, and sex. Uh, from my understanding, what I, w- I was taught is that they actually were born out of necessity as, so we have this thing called the great year of consciousness, you know, where we, like like the spring and the summer and the fall and the winter, consciousness is at all high, all time high at a place called the Krita. And then you go to, down into what we call the Kali Yug, where we're thinking that we're separate and that we're races and that we're all these different things. We're just coming out of the Kali Yug now and we're going back into spring, but we're still in winter and we're going to be there for another like 2,000 some years. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, uh, I've heard that these different technologies came from a place of uh, the, those of us who are embodied in the masculine needing to be reminded because the feminine already kind of gets it in certain ways. So, these technologies came to help remind us masculine beings. Uh, about connecting to, with our heart and being able to see things as a whole and everything. So that's one answer. And I believe that it's an especially good um, technology for where we're at now because of all of the different isms, uh, you know, that, that we have on the planet, that it can bring us back into a holistic way of being. Is it a combination of uh, spiritual, emotional, physical, bioenergetic work, so to speak? So I'm assuming it's quite a holistic practice. Yes, sir. It's like, so... What I like to say is that, and getting a little quantum physics with it, is like, yeah. uh, uh, we, look, we, we live in this world where we're thinking that we're solid beings, you know, and that, and that we're just meeting, you know, genitals, you know, penetration, in and out, and we're done, right? Roll over, mm. have a cigarette, whatever. <laughs> the truth is, <laughs> the truth is we're way more vast beings than that. And, and that when we start to talk quantum physically, we're not just talking about dealing with like uh, solids and particles. Now we're talking about waves and that we're energetic beings that are moving in waves. And like how my voice is coming and hitting hitting your eardrum and rolling through your being and affecting you. And then when Mm. you speak, it's having the same effect on me and all the people through time and space that are listening to us. So um, when we start to have that conversation and start to see ourselves as more advanced and more uh, uh, vast beings, that is the central emotional exchange that I'm talking about. SEX lowercase. That's what we've been having, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not dogging that out. That's that's the porno stuff, and okay, that's what that's what brought us to the planet, probably, in all actuality. So it's it's sufficient. But as we talk about evolution and us growing, that's us remembering, not 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 learning, remembering because we already know this. It's in our DNA. It's in our divine natural awareness, our DNA, that we are these vast beings. Hmm. I love that, man. Um, let me paint a scenario for you. I'm, I'm curious as to. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment, and I'm curious what you know how you would respond to that, and and how you would navigate someone through that. So, devil's advocate. Yeah. Hey, man. Hear what you're saying, Shofar. Yeah, it sounds okay, but hold on a second. You know, you're talking about this unity business. You're talking about wholeness, but hey, man. I'm a white man or hey man, I'm Mexican, I'm black. What about my culture? What are you saying that you just forget about my culture? What about my upbringing? You know, my people have suffered pain and my people have, have experienced this. And, you know, what are you talking about difference? Of course we're different. I'm a man or I'm a woman. He's a man or she's a woman or hey, we're different. You know, he's older, I'm younger. But people seem to make whatever they are better than what they're not. And so, you know, and then that, again, that devil's advocate, you know, Shofar, you're talking about unity, consciousness and wholeness, man, fuck that. We're different. And what would you say to that? I love it. And I, I, I love that. I, first off, like the, the devil's advocate or like we talked about earlier about the, the Osarian uh, theory, or, uh, I mean, uh, story uh, with Set or Satan. Actually, there. So when we're talking about wholeness and consciousness, there's really not there's nothing that is not still serving the whole but with that being said um like say for instance black lives matter 
And then we have some people in the yoga community or those of us who are quote unquote woke or whatever, <laughs> would be like, all vibes matter, you know? And yes, all lives do matter. But to get there, we're going to have to go through Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter and, you know, uh, women matter. Like, we're going to have to go through these other stages to get there. And so I, I would say, brother or sister, I hear you and I agree with you wholeheartedly. And we got to get we got to go through the dirt to get there. It's not going to be any spiritual bypassing. Yep. Yep. I love the way you said that. And I love the way that you've gone into that because that's a big thing, man, in our you know, in the quote unquote work AF communities is that, <laughs> you know, that, that spiritual bypassing that exists. And we, you know, at some point, I think we've all done it. I think, you know, when we look deeper into what spiritual bypassing is, you know, really, man, it's a fear. It's a fear. It's a protectiveness. It's that, that ego id split. It's the fragments and fractures of self of the psyche that are here to protect us. And they're bypassing what they feel what these parts of us feel are immense aspects of pain and fear that it just we can't we, we perceive we can't deal with the brain doesn't want to go there it feels like the nervous system's in overload the the psyche and the emotional body is in overload and so we avoid it and so hey everything's okay it's all good it's happening for a reason i don't have to feel this it's it's part of the lesson for me to go above it and beyond it and i think we're really missing something because you know, and this is a, a more of a, a young energetic that I'm going to speak to in a moment, or a masculine energetic, whatever language you prefer, or, or a, a, a do or, or go energetic that I'm going to speak to. But there's something to be said for moving through challenge. There's a resilience that's cultivated within us, right? And a confidence that comes from, oh, I've, I've trekked through the mud. I've trekked through the really tall grass, the thorns and the weeds, and, and, and I've climbed this steep mountain. And there's something to be said for getting through that and that wholeness that you're speaking to. It's, it's not avoiding. And so we're not living in fracture and we're living in greater openness because we're actually looking at all facets of being. And I think that's something that we miss so much, right? We miss so we miss that so much in life that we we just we we divide in order to feel some sense of superiority and safety. Like, oh, we've got control now. I've got control now. So if I divide and separate myself, I can observe very clearly what I'm controlling, and I'll control through making myself better. And that attitude permeates the collective. And in doing so, what are we doing? We're, we're losing ourselves. And so this thing that we're trying to set, we're trying to separate ourselves and make, create a distinction to, you know, place ourselves in a higher echelon of being. But what we're actually doing is dimming ourselves fucking massively. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree by trying to, to trying to, uh, you know, step away from these things and everything, but it's like the sun stepping behind a cloud and everything. You know, I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I like, I, I like how you said that, the sun stepping behind the cloud. What's your, you know, man, it's it's interesting being, uh, for me, being identified as a Caucasian man. Like, it's interesting. I've lived my life identified as a, I suppose, Western European man. I mean, I grew up in Australia. My father's Greek. My mother's Italian. I grew up a little in Greece as well. Um, but you know, you know, by by larger means, I've I've grown up and I, as a as a Caucasian man, right? As a Caucasian male. It's interesting that something you said earlier about being black and being a man and being a black man. I mean, I don't know if many people know this, but statistically speaking, black men are, 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 are the the most one of the most, if not the most, oppressed, marginalized group in the world. That, that's a that's yeah that's a big breath bro like i feel that in my chest man you know like i feel that for you as a brother i feel that for my other brothers that identify in this way like it's a fucking big thing man and we miss that man like we we think oh you're a man like you're sweet you're a man like it's like you know you live in a patriarchy patriarchy has been dominating the world i mean that's another conversation but the black man is the most marginalized man on earth today it has been for some time you look at the statistics i can pull a book out behind me there it's and it's not just a book, right? It's, it's, we can visibly see a lot of this. I'm not saying that white men or other men of other nationalities aren't oppressed or ostracized. I'm not saying that women aren't ostracized or even older people, the elderly are ostracized in our society. We don't give them the wisdom and the respect. You know, you mentioned four or five tribes that were on that, that land that is now called Virginia. 
I guarantee you those tribes cherished their elders. Right. So there's all this marginalization, but you mentioned that black and that man and that black man, and it got me thinking about this marginalization that we don't really speak to a lot. I just, I, I just want to know what, what, with respect to that, what's on your heart? Because I don't want to avoid these conversations. I know they're tough conversations. I know it's, I know, I know that I have, I carry an unconscious privilege in the sense that I'm middle class. I'm 38 years old. I'm Caucasian male. Um, I'm healthy in my body. I have access to resources. I know that I'm in a dominant subgroup of society. I get that. And I don't want to minimize my voice and I don't want to minimize these subject matters either from my perspective. I want to talk about them openly. I know that's why you and I are here, obviously, right? Um, and I know you're open to that and I know you love that and your heart's open to it. And I fucking love you for loving that. <laughs> and and, and what's, what's been your experience with that, man? Because, you know, you're living in that, in this skin suit. You're living in that skin suit every day. And, and whilst... I see you as a hue, as a hue being. I love Ace as a hue being. I see you as a hue being. I also see you as all these other things. I see you with a man that has facial hair. I see you as a black man. I see you as a man. You know, I, I, I see you as a, an American as well. You obviously live in America. Um, and, and any other way that you choose to identify with that you want me to, to see you as. So talk to me a little bit about that, brother. I love it. Uh, well, what I was saying to that is like, I, I love the different points that you brought up there, Stefan. And one of the things that I loved about Malcolm, uh, to me, I, I bring Malcolm up, Malcolm X. Uh, to me, he wasn't just a black hero, um, or I feel like he should also be looked at as an American hero and a, a huge being hero, like for consciousness. You know, especially when you look at how he grew and his trajectory and the things that he went through and, and how he became who he came to be before his life was taken. So um, one of the things that he said is that, and I'm, I'm saying this to say about the uncomfortable conversations, he said, y'all know how to sweet talk white people. You know how to sweet talk and you know how to say, you know, or put on a nice face. It's time that you start showing the real what's going on with you and really speaking out about about being marginalized and being discriminated against. And it's time for us to stop looking at, at, at racism as like, you know, like, excuse me for being crass for a minute, but like, oh, nigga, get over it. Like, you know, slavery was 400 years ago things are still going on like like we, we saw what went on with floyd but i mean like how many of us know about after katrina you know happened uh you know hurricane katrina and how the people were moved off of their lands out, out, out of those lands and new new gentrified places were put up and none of the people who used to live there could qualify for those new places this is just in the in the 2000s you know or that the the san diego uh, i mean the uh the south dakota pipeline was put through a reservation in the 2000s so this stuff is still going on. And I love the ability to have these uncomfortable conversations. And again, we need to realize that we are consciousness, but then as we come down into the third dimension, you know, that we do have these, the European body and the, and the black body yeah. able to talk sure. about because that's how we're going to heal and we're going to grow. Uh, so uh, that, 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 that journey is some, one that I'm still on uh, is yeah. one that for the rest of this lifetime, however long I, I have the exhale inhale, I uh, have this, that, you know, I, I will be in that journey and, 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 and experiencing these things. But uh, it, it has been and continues to be, I, I think, one of my deepest works as far as healing, because it is something that's constantly re-triggered. You know, in order for, because there's an innate intelligence with, us, with, uh, with our skin, right? We cut something and then it, it heals. But the yeah. thing about yeah. racism, why we wonder why, or, or again with the isms, is that we keep messing with the wound and the people can never heal because of the isms you know if a person is, is, is has gone through uh you know their whole life not understanding their sex and feeling like a man but in a woman's body or something like that and, and we mm. we're constantly because of the way society is is built we're constantly messing with that and it, they can't be healing or if a black person you know and there's uh the black community and uh, we talk about, well, I wonder why black people can't get themselves together and get, it's because we're constantly going back at the scab and it can't heal, you know? We need a, a place of, uh, there needs to be a, 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 a and, and it needs to be like a cocooning of sorts, you know, the, the yin energy, the feminine energy of healing, there usually needs to be a place of, home, of, 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 of deep silence and, and uh, to bring in the materials and the resources in order for that transformation to happen, you can't do that if we keep picking at the butterfly 
And that's what happens each time these different events happen, you know? You know, brother, you said, um, oh, you said a few things there that I want to, I want to touch on. So it, it's interesting about the, the cocoon piece, but you said something about silence and stillness, right? I heard a story once and, and God was sitting on the throne of God and it's an allegory, right? It's a story. And okay. God is contemplating where, where shall I put? And it's interesting. We use the word I as if God is an I. That's another story. That's another conversation. But God is, is where shall I put and place the secrets of the universe? Where? Where, where, and God is contemplating this, what appears to be eons and eons and eons and eons, but really for God, it's a timeless, timeless split second, not even, right? And God says, ah, I know. I shall place these secrets in stillness and silence for humanity fears to go there. And you touched on something there, man. Like we don't spend enough time just being still. We don't spend enough time just being in our own silence, listening to the vibration echo of our own sound, our own heartbeat, our own thoughts, our own feelings. We're so quickly to so quick to distract, so quick to lose ourselves, so quick to forget about who we really are. And so you you, you know you're right when you say that. How can we go into any level of wholeness? when we continuously fracture ourselves continuously and and we're, we're taught you know we're, we're taught this it's i see it everywhere there's this people will look at each other and they'll be fearful because the other person's different you know there's been massive studies done on on discrimination and prima facie association and you can do the you can do these own tests you just look up the what the link is i don't know which which universities a number of university studies that can show you how discriminative you are it's based on time tests and ask you question you have to answer in a particular way and click faces and things like that <laughs> isms are so inbuilt within us so our brain naturally compartmentalizes and it does that to keep itself safe i get that but over time the culturally compounded effect of that has had us layering meaning across difference and saying oh you're different you're bad you're a bad person you're dangerous you're unsafe you deserve illness you deserve to be pushed away and i believe these unconscious paradigms permeate the way we relate to each other and i just it's you know what what i don't know this is a big question man it's a big existential question but i'm going to ask it anyway because you've got big shoulders what the fuck is it going to take <laughs> for that to even even begin to shift? What the fuck is it going to take for that begin to, to begin to even shift? Hold on, man. Let me get my Atlas Shrug on real quick. Uh, uh, you better do some reps, bro, and get warm because that's a fucking dear. big uh. question. <laughs> Yo, man, that's a that's 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 one for us all to live together. And truth be told, as a village, but that's the answer. Uh, and my little attempt to what, what it means for me is, so my lady, I mean, my queen, uh, shout out to Kirti, I see you on here, um, dropping a lot of wisdom on there for those, uh, I see it in, you know, coming up scrolling. Uh, we have an acronym that we're doing, uh, uh, racism, and we have a course on it. The, the racism is an acronym and the A is for awareness. So you take the A and you shine it up like, like the ancient Egyptians, Ra, you know, Boom. the A shining down on the rest of the letters. The yeah. R Racism, the C is for classism, the I is for intellectualism, the S is for sexism, and the M is for materialism. No doubt we have we have way more than that, you know. That's that stuff and also is, is definitely some major ones, right? And then the yeah. deep thing about it is looking at not in society, uh, this this brilliant mind named uh, Dr. Amos Wilson, um, who wrote a book called The Blueprint for Black Power. And I know that word black power, those two words put together scare a lot of people. Oh, um, people don't like that. People don't like that. That, uh, thre that threatens a lot of institutional uh, uh, you know, knowledge. No, no, people don't like that. Yeah, you know, and, and so he, he, he said that we look at society as if it's somewhere out there, but society is us. And so looking at where those different isms are in us, for instance, um, say we're about to get, say we're getting married, right? And and I want to, I want everyone to just think about the, 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 the dissonance that this may cause in our brain. Say we get ready to get married, and instead of the woman taking the man's name, what if we take her last? <laughs> wait, wait, what? What? No, that, 
<laughs> well, that's sexism. Why is she taking our last name? You know, why we now own her? Is she our possession? Is that where that comes from? Here's another one. Just, just showing us again where these isms are alive in us. Think of it this way: like we, we, we're, we're getting this brand new car, new Mercedes. You know, no, not bad. Let's let's do a Lexus because you know they're made by Toyota, right? Oh yeah. New Lexus, whatever the top class is, right? And then here's the thing: the challenge that I want us to say. Now go somewhere and have the Lexus, the the, the the name taken off and the class of it taken off. So no one knows what it is that you're driving. That's classism. We're wanting people to know, hey man, I, I got a little bit more money than you do. You know. So this is where the different isms are alive in us, bro. I get it, man. I get it. I see that. I, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty to that, if that's the right word, but I'm, I, you know, I'm part of that. You, you know, we, we, and we, we do, it's interesting, you know, so, oh, you know, if I'm going to wear this watch or I'm going to wear this necklace or this band or these shoes or the car, like you said, or the house or the postcode or whatever it is. And there's parts of us that, and I'll speak for myself, there's parts of me that, oh, okay, if I'm, if I'm, I catch myself, I'm, if I'm going out and I'm going to be in a social place, um, there will be times where I want to present in a certain way so I perceive people see me in a certain way and that's that ism where I'm at, I'm at a certain level or class right and I don't you know I think the first step to not escaping that but moving beyond it as a means of my value and my self-worth is completely tied up in that because that's the issue right and we become addicted to that then and the way to the first way to move past that I think is awareness is that that big a shining down is can I just own it? Can I just sit in ownership of it and ha take a w have awareness around that so that I can then consciously choose, you know what? Sure, I'm going to make a change around that. I agree. I agree, bro. And, and knowing that, you know, like in traditional Chinese medicine, which is another part of my, my, my background, is mm. we look at things in the body when we're not in a place of homeostasis. And let's be honest, like who amongst us uh, is, you know, where you... Yeah usually doing this anyway right you know in some yep. way um uh so we either have we either look at things from a place of deficiency or excess so mm. when we go through the isms whether i be the privileged or the underprivileged whether i be mm. the oppressor or the oppressed whether i mm. be the empowered or the disempowered i'm still playing into it one way or the other <laughs> It's feeding into it, and that's the relationship, full circle into we are in relationship with everything we do. And every you cannot have a perpetrator without a victim. Right. And, and at some level, this and, and people and people struggle to hear that. And I get it, man. I'm a I'm a quote unquote victim of abuse as well. I, I, I feel that I've been abused in different ways in my life. And there were times, of course, where I was a child, I was unconscious, I wasn't able to protect myself or make decisions to, to move me from that, that environment. But we're talking we're sort of at a meta-analysis here. We exist in relationship to each other. And how do we, and again, the quality, what quality relationship do we want to be? I saw a comment here, the poetry bender, I love it. We should just walk around naked. I'll tell you what, that would probably solve a lot of issues. <laughs> I'll probably solve a lot of issues because then there's that rawness, right? Like we spoke about this earlier with you, with your with your openness as you're coming into the world as a young man. D you know, de uh, defragmenting yourself and going into okay, I'm, I'm, I want to move into wholeness. What does it look like and feel like? I just, I don't know. I think that's. I think if we all ask ourselves that question, man, I think that's a great start to that. To that, how do we break free of a society that is over segregated? It's too, it's too separating, and I think that's part of it. I think that is there. That's that's a that's a, a pretty empowered first step. I agree, and I and I think that's where orgasm, where orgasm is so powerful. Uh, stuff in those hmm. books. Um, that's the little death, right? That the ego for a oh minute, yeah, that that meaning making machine, the monkey mind, the you know, uh, it takes a break for a second. Chill the fuck out, you know, for a second. Yep. And that holistic moment where none of these things exist. And the powerful thing about central motion exchange or about these different uh, technologies went, uh, that, you know, like yoga and Qigong and, 
how they can get us to have that moment of orgasmicness or whatever is that in that place uh, we're able to 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 take the fragments and put them together and mm. that's why I think sensual motion exchange and, and and those different technologies they can heal us and get us back to the place of wholeness again uh, I, I, I I truly believe that they can change the world I believe that too man and I agree with that with orgasm and physical orgasm being that mini death and physical orgasm grounding us in the present moment where nothing else matters everything out on the periphery is gone this it's it's like this it's like when you see a, an image of the big bang or a, or a, a star almost imploding it's like it collapses in on itself and then poof, like and that's that that orgasm right man i i mean i could share very many stories with respect to that sacredness of union and that connection that deep sensual sexual connection uh, just you know once with my wife we we had an amazing amazing connection sexual union and connection we we then almost we both collapsed after into this just boom out right and we it, we went into this this dreamscape where we were we we almost just woke up suddenly at the same time and we described to each other the same dream we were in the same we were in the same space and it was because of the quality of the union and the way the deliberate nature of that and the intentionality that we brought into that and the presence like and i think actually you know let's just scrap everything we've said and just say how do we shift into a more inclusive connected bonded society i think there's one word answer it's orgasm like <laughs> <laughs> right right oh shit i think i think that's yeah. it i think that's the answer it's definitely the most fun bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's for sure that is for sure man um sure i love talking to you brother i appreciate you so much um i you know is there anything I, i'll be mindful of your time as well is there anything you want to add anything you want to say i'd love you know how to obviously have people reach you your website whatever anything and you know anything and everything and i'll give my details as well oh man i appreciate it first off um I want to say real quick shout out to uh, the poetry bender. I, I know you pointed him out. So that whole thing about the car with uh, taking the name off and everything. I remember him posing one time. We had went to like an open mic together, and I think he had said that he had stepped down uh, the, the level of card that he had because he started thinking like, if nobody saw me in this Benz, would I even care of having it? You know. So that actually again how you know relationships and how we can affect each other. So that 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 level of con when you gave him a shout out, that's where I was like, oh shoot. That's where I got it from, that brother right there, you know? So, so good. You know, uh, but what I have going on that I'm excited about is Cure Theme. Mm. We have uh, Intimate Relating. We do that with couples. I um, uh, have Chi Up, which is a brand new program for men for who want to learn the sensual emotional exchange or step I love up their they're, they're divine masculine. So I have that. And then the last offering that I'm really excited about right now is racism. Again, uh, shining that A up with awareness, racism, classism intellectualism sexism and materialism so and then for those who want to also maybe learn a little bit more but not interact with me yet um you might want to check out my book sacred orgasmic living so so and uh, i love that i definitely appreciate you bro i i said